Lovecraft Country HBO series review and how its author, Matt Ruff, is the real racist. There will be spoilers. I got the seven-day free trial. I wasn't going to pay three months for this shit. There is next to nothing Lovecraftian about this show besides the title. The opening dream sequence has a flying Cthulhu head that looks like something out of a heavy metal video from the 80s. And it is never seen again in the show, though they used it for the advertising. The protagonist calls a city Arkham instead of Ardham. There is a Necronomicon name drop. And they call the monster in the show a Shoggoth, but it is by no definition accurate. And there's a cult that uses magic, which is not something invented by Lovecraft, nor an indicator of his work. And that's it. Absolutely nothing else is remotely Lovecraftian. The people who say otherwise have obviously never read Lovecraft. And honestly, real Lovecraft fans, you can probably just stop watching now. But at least give the video a thumbs up and drop a comment down at the bottom. Thanks. Anyway, on with the review, and I will present all the reasons as we go on why it is my opinion that author Matt Ruff is the real racist. The book was originally written as a TV series script like X-Files, which is why the story feels so choppy. And it was obviously never about writing a story about empowering black Americans, but about a white author making money by exploiting the plight of the black American throughout the early 20th century and using Lovecraft in the title to exploit the controversy that has flared up in recent years about the dead man's racist youth. The actors did a great job, and if you took out all the extra stuff except for the cult storyline, it would have made a decent film. Episode 1. All white people are racist, and they will try to kill black people on sight. White people are literally monsters, and the Shoggoth is white. This will play an important part in author Matt Ruff's extreme racism later on. Episode 2. More racist white people. Some are cultists. But they're about the dumbest kind of cultists. They're a Christian cult. I, I, I don't get it. A lot of the suspension of disbelief is ruined by the use of modern music when there are plenty of era-specific music they could have used. The spoken word poem from 1970 completely destroys the climactic ending of this episode. Episode 3. We hear the story of how a white mob was going to kill some of the black protagonists when they were younger, but a ghost with a bat killed all the bad white people then disappeared. Then a group of young white men show up to harass the black protagonists in their new home, complete with burning crosses on the lawn. This episode is your typical ghost story, except... Guess, guess, guess what? Guess what? The ghost is a white racist who is stopped by black voodoo, another racist stereotype, and the black ghosts are freed and kill the racist ghost. Episode 4. There's a racist museum tour. This is the lame National Treasure Indiana Jones episode, which they always kind of shoehorn in, but it just doesn't, it just feels right out of place, though it does play a part at the end of the show. But we do learn that author Matt Ruff doubles down on his racism. He not only exploits black American culture, but also Native American culture in this episode. Episode 5. This is the body swapping episode. Black woman becomes a white woman. And of course it concludes with your standard get revenge in the bad white man ending. Some really good body horror effects though. Episode 6. Obligatory what happened during the war episode. Only this time... The main black protagonist plays the role of the white savior American soldier, and the Korean stereotype has a supernatural element. Thank you, racist author Matt Ruff, for exploiting the Korean people as well. But I give him too much credit. I just can't remember the name of the anime he ripped off for this episode. And of course, like the white cop in episode one, the Korean character is a literal monster. Episode seven, obligatory time travel episode. But this one is the standout of the entire series. It would have worked really well as a standalone Twilight Zone episode. But of course, this is all totally ruined because once again, this story is not about empowering black Americans, but in creating the narrative that all white people are bad. And this episode goes even further saying straight out that all white people should be killed. Keep in mind, this coming from a white author so once again, he is obviously using this to exploit racial tensions for his own monetary gain. 
episode eight. This is where Matt Ruff's racism shines. He pulls out all the stops in this one. What would a series about racism be without the angry black Muslim stereotypes? But surprisingly, they were only used momentarily. It turns out the racist cops are also cultists who know magic. And of course, all white people are racist. Oh, and they take everything from black people. It's actually part of the dialogue. And we're given a step-by-step -step guide of how to feel white guilt. And the racist author, Matt Ruff, literally turns the black stereotype of the magical Negro into real characters, also stating it directly in dialogue. It's actually really disgusting. The author is outright telling black readers that he is exploiting them, and they don't see it. And the Shoggoth returns. This time, for whatever reason, it's a black Shoggoth. But it's friendly, so maybe that's why. And maybe I didn't notice in the first episode, and this might not be on the author, it might be on the audio person from HBO, but the Shoggoth is making monkey noises, which is another extremely bad racist stereotype. Plus, characters are constantly referencing that people smell, which was another very old-time racist trope. It has a haunted cream of wheat man. It's in the title of the episode, which is Jigabobo, and he turned the little black girl character from Uncle Tom's cabin into monsters. Episode 9, another time travel episode. Begins tying up all the family drama loose ends, once again would have worked much better on its own without all the supernatural elements. But author Matt Ruff just keeps pushing his racist narrative by now turning the young female black protagonist into one of the Uncle Tom's cabin monsters. And it completely destroys the seriousness of the ending of the entire show. The time travel does tie into the real-life Tulsa Race Massacre, the same one that was featured in the Watchmen TV series. But the episode itself was incredibly well done. Episode 10. Anticlimactic ending. Cast the magic spell. Fix the kid. Fulfill your destiny. For some reason, bring the old white racist back from the dead so that you can get revenge on him by killing him again. But it was necessary for the final spell, of course. Fucking stupid. And the old trope of Dies Ex Machina, where a seemingly unsolvable problem in a story is suddenly and abruptly resolved by an unexpected and unlikely occurrence. It turns out that the Korean spirit monster girl didn't leave town and helped save the day. And possibly the lamest ending to any film involving magic. Their magic spell... And this is like, put it in quotes, prevents all white people in the world from using magic. It belongs to black people now. End quote. I'm sure there are thousands of magical practitioners of every race, culture, and nationality laughing at the complete ignorance of this show. And of course, racist author Matt Ruff gives the final, final, final vengeance to the magical Negro character who is now a cyborg. Okay, and the Black Shoggoth, which is exactly what you would expect from a virtue-signaling dumb white boy. But of course, you now know that was all a joke, because I've let you in on all the hidden, real racist stuff that he put in the story. Fuck you, Matt Ruff, you racist piece of shit. Cthulhu Photography.